Good morning, coaches. How are you doing? It is Sanai Floyd here, business breakthrough coach and sales mentor. And I wanted to come in here this morning and talk to you about a bit of mindset, a bit of strategy, but really importantly, five key steps that will help you to um, get your next handful or your first handful, if you're fairly new to your coaching business, your first handful of paying clients from the online space. And I'm talking organically. So there are five key things that, you know, I've been in this business for what, almost seven years now. And there are, and I've invested, you know, thousands over those years in different courses and coaches and, and the core is always the same. It always boils down to these kind of five key elements for success in your coaching business. It always boils down to these ones. So I want to give them to you kind of really quickly kind of dial in and just you know, give you the high level, I guess. Um, so the first strategy, or um, sorry, not strategy, scratch that. The first element to success in your um, ability to attract and enroll your dream clients over, you know, even just over the next 30 days um, is your mindset. Your mindset is everything. Um, you know, they say, don't they? Success in any endeavor is 90%, 95% even psychology five to 10% strategy. And that is absolutely true when it comes to your coaching business. There is nothing more confronting than going out there, putting yourself out there in a really big way for the first time in your coaching business, because it feels so personal. You know, it's you putting your gifts out there, promoting yourself, talking about your experiences. And, and it's it, it feels so personal. So mind, mastering your mindset in this game is absolutely critical. You know, coaches will start their business and and the first thing they'll start to focus on is who will pay me? You know, what what are, what have I got to give? You know, what can I offer as value and how can I compete with all the other the coaches out there and all the gurus that are out there? And if you begin your coaching journey from that space, it's going to be really difficult to move forward. So you've got to really get excited about what it is you bring to the table, like your unique proposition, your unique skills, your unique experience, your unique gifts, talents. You know, what is it that you bring to the table? You've got to own that and really um, get excited about it. So this first step of mindset is about training your focus every single day. So, you know, Eliminate doubt by owning what you bring to the table and train your brain to focus on exactly what it is that you want to create. So this is about, you know, you understand your reticular activating system, which is that part of your brain that acts like an antenna and will um, pull your attention to anything and everything that is a match to what's important to you. So if you're focusing on fearful thoughts or doubt, then your reticular activating system is going to bring to you everything that is a match to, to perpetuate that fear and doubt. So this is about training your brain, creating the daily disciplines that will support you every day to really show up at your highest and best. So I'm talking about things like, um, you know, affirmations, affirmation is so powerful when you find those words that really kind of resonate with your own your own body yourself and and that gives you that uplifting sense then use those words as affirmations um also do this daily because your brain is a um is a muscle hey fei hun your brain is a muscle so as you're flexing that muscle every day using your affirmations, focusing on what it is you want to create, then it gets stronger and stronger and easier and easier. So mindset disciplines on a daily basis would be things like, as I've said, affirmations, creating visualizations for yourself of what it is you want to create, daily scripting, you know, writing out the next level life that you want to create for yourself. It's so, so powerful. Um, journaling every day so that you're constantly monitoring your thoughts and where you're attention is being pulled and if it's being pulled in a direction that is fearful and doubtful pull it back be very self-aware um, gratitude journaling massively powerful because as you focus on what is going well what you're grateful for you are creating a, a frequency a vibration that is going to attract in more of the same you know what you focus on you attract what you focus on you become so it's really important step one master your mindset 
critical. Okay, step two is really dial in to who it is that you are here to serve. Again, you hear this all the time. I know you do. You know, get clear on your ideal client, your ideal client avatar. Um, but you hear it all the time because it is fundamental and it is absolutely critical for so many different reasons. Um, so the first thing I'm going to say to you is if, if, if if you say, yep, yeah, I'm clear on my ideal client, she's a woman, she's aged between 30 and 50, then immediately I'm going to stop you there and say, no, that's not an ideal client avatar, that's an audience. The first thing you want to do is dial right into that one specific ideal client. Because when you do that, you can create content that will resonate with where she's at. You know, we're all at different stages of the life cycle, but there are general generalities that you can use in your content that will speak to your ideal client. So let me give you a perfect example. If I had a problem that you solve and I'm scrolling through my social media feed and I see that there is content you're putting out there that is talking about the problem that you that that I have. But then you talk about um, how that problem may affect this woman, your ideal client. Um, and you talk about um, how it affects her because she's got young children, for example. I would scroll on by because at my stage of the life cycle that is that I am now an empty nester a new hands up empty nester. My children have just flown the nest to go to university. So if I'm seeing content, it may talk to me about the problem that, that I have, but it won't resonate with me on a deeper level because it's talking to um, somebody who has younger children. So I'll be like, oh, that's not relevant. I won't, my brain won't even connect to it because it's not relevant to me. So you've got to create content that speaks to your ideal client, to the problem you solve and how that problem affects and perpetuates in other areas of her life. So by virtue of that, you know where she's at in her life cycle. So I hope that makes sense. A woman at age 30 is at a very different stage of life than a woman age 50, for example. Their priorities are different. So really dial into your ideal client avatar. Um, other reasons why this is so important is because you have a connection with this one person. And when you feel that deep connection, it kind of it kind of gives that passion a boost. It enables you to to really show up for that person because you're focused on this one individual. So really, really important to dial in to what it is, to who it is that you serve your ideal client avatar. When you know this, not only can you create content that will speak to her, but you can also create your offers that will be really resonant with her as well. So this leads me into the third step. So step one is master your mindset, flex that muscle every single day. Step two, get crystal clear on who it is you serve, your ideal client avatar, like really get specific. I know it's scary to get specific because you think of all those potential opportunities that you're missing out on, but that's a fallacy. When you get really specific on your ideal client avatar, you will attract more people because you're your content is so much more powerful. And by virtue of your specificity, you actually stand out as a specialist. So very, very important. And, and so the third thing as I'm leading into is crafting your offer. Um, I see a lot of coaches out there, newer coaches who will sell their coaching in, in a kind of in a wrapper of, you know, I sell six sessions for 500 pounds or, you know, nine sessions for a thousand or whatever it is. That's going to, that's not going to attract your ideal client. You're going to struggle if you're trying to kind of sell your coaching in that way. Because effective, you know, essentially people aren't buying coaching. People are looking at, can you solve my problem? Does your offer solve my problem? What are the outcomes? What are the results that I'm going to get as a result of going through your coaching, your package? So craft your offer so that it has an outcome, a result that your ideal client wants, that solves that headline problem that your ideal client has. And of course, there'll be all the ripple effect benefits of, of that offer that you're, you're creating. But it's when you're wanting to put it out there and promote it and have it a be appealing and irresistible, as they say in the marketplace, you know, an irresistible offer. It's got to speak to the, 
to the problem that you solve and ensure that it's talking about the results. So I always talk about you're selling the, the payoffs, not the process. You know, if I was to buy a washing machine, I'm not really buying a washing machine. I'm buying an appliance that looks incredible in my kitchen, that it will last me for years, that is cost efficient, that cleans my clothes, that works, that has all these sleek feet, you know, features that um, have benefits for me personally. So, you know, you've got to think in those terms, like talk about the benefits more than the features. Okay, so I think I've drilled that home. So this is about your offer. The fourth key step is your visibility strategy. Guys, this is so important. You've got to create content that positions you as the expert, that is massive value. So you may be asking, well, how do I create content that positions me as an expert? Well, the simple answer is, teach your stuff, be the expert, teach what you know. You know, there's so many people out there that are posting lovely memes and great quotes and inspirational stuff, but it's not positioning their value in the marketplace. And this is really important. If you want people to pay you for your service, you've got to show up as the expert and position your specialism. And this is where you create content that teaches, that shares what you know, that delivers real value. And if you're doing that and you're doing it consistently, then that's when you're building that essential know, like, and trust. But added with the other three, so getting your mindset on point, knowing your ICA and having your, um, your offer nailed in. If you've got all those three nailed on, when you're showing up from that new kind of powerful, confident, energetic space and really specific in your, in your um, message, you will often attract people who will immediately see one of your, your content and they will book a call and buy from you immediately. Because you, you've, you've got that energy of, of confidence and credibility. And this has happened to me many, many times. People have just see a post, see a bit of content. They might spend a bit of time binge watching other stuff, but very they make a decision very quickly because it's all aligned. Very important. It's all in that, that space of alignment and clarity. Hey, Ange. Um, so... So it's not about, you know, waiting the long game. Sometimes you will get people that will just be make that decision very quickly. But it's for those people that need to kind of build that that um, momentum and that trust and also for you to build that credibility by showing up consistently. That's where it's so important to just push through those pain barriers. You know, one of the biggest pains that we all have to push through as coaches in this online space is that that kind of period where it feels like nothing's happening. You know, I've been posting and posting and posting and all I'm getting is tumbleweeds, there's no engagement. Do you know that's actually a rite of passage? That is building your strength, your resilience in this game. You know, rejection is all part of the journey. And when you can own it and when you can push through it, it, it creates a better story ultimately that, you know, I push through all this fear and it, it just develops that strength, that inner character and resilience for you as a business owner when you don't fall at the first hurdle, when you don't kind of curl up and think it's not working after a few days. This is part of the journey. It's the rite of passage. Okay, so the fifth thing here to really get good at and master is your sales. Sales. So I have been coaching, mentoring, training in sales for over, what, 20, I say, I keep changing, but it's about 25 years. I can't remember the exact time, but it's about 25 years. And if there's one skill that you need to get really comfortable with in your business, it's the, it's the skill of sales. Now, say, all of what I've talked about is selling, all of it. It's all the end-to-end -end process of sales, getting your mindset nailed on, knowing exactly who your, your customer is, your client is, making sure that you're off is marketable and speaks to that ideal client that talk, you know that sells the payoffs, being visible, marketing yourself confidently, showing up as the expert. All of that is part of your end-to-end -end sales process. But the final fifth key is really changing your mindset around what sales is, because 
sales is so loaded and it's no wonder you know it's no wonder we we see in the news and we've heard so many stories and even in films that sales comes off as being sleazy it's like you know there's a lot of out of integrity mindset around sales or beliefs around sales we feel greedy asking for money you know we have all this negativity loaded to sales so it's simply a belief structure it's a paradigm that you have if, if you're struggling in this way it's simply a belief a paradigm a mindset that you have around sales that you can decide in a heartbeat to change it's a choice but the important thing is you've got to change it because if you don't get comfortable with being able to to speak to a prospect and feel really authentic and really owning your specialism and owning your ability to help this person, then you're going to lose those sales because people need to be guided by you. They need to feel that they need to feel your confidence and self-belief for them to have confidence and self-belief in you and in their ability to to make the change. So mastering your sales mindset, critical, because and, and this applies to any any area, really. And as I, I said at the beginning, success in any endeavor is 90 to 95 percent psychology, five to 10 percent is your strategy. So you can there's multiple sales processes out there. I have my particular sales process. It's it's really authentic. It's a conversation, but it doesn't matter about whether you have that particular one. You can have any sales strategy that works but if your mindset is shot, if you have this feeling, I'm out of integrity, I'm greedy, this is icky, oh my God, I don't want to ask this person for money, then the strategy becomes irrelevant because it just, it won't work. So getting that confidence around your um, sales conversation and what sales really is about, what it really means is so, so important. So guys, Get these things really crystal clear, get them nailed on, shift your mindset, move your body. You know, if you're feeling a bit like, oh, God, this is overwhelming, I'm stuck, nothing's working, change your state. The quickest way to change your state is change your body, move your body, physiology. When you can start to just shift, you break up that energy, that stuck feeling, and you start to allow more clarity to come in. Um, so, yeah and you struggle with that feeling guilty, you know, it's such a common thing, but it really comes down to it's an old paradigm that you're in. It's not, it's not true. And it's understanding that it's just a feeling I have, I can choose to break that state and have a feeling of complete joy and alignment and, and excitement that I get to exchange my value and serve someone in a really powerful way. So guys, I hope you found this helpful for a Monday morning. It's a bit of a like, rah, um, but uh, you know, I'm here to serve. If you have questions, comments, please put them below. As always, I love to hear from you and I shall speak to you all again soon. So thank you so much for watching. Get yourselves out there, make a difference, create an impact, and I shall speak to you soon. Bye for now.